Hello and welcome to another GPS train video. In this video I'm going to be using SiteWorks to show you how to topo a stockpile and get some quantities. First thing we're going to do is go to Project Setup and we're going to change the project and we're going to make sure that we have the right project, the right design, and make sure we're in the right work order. Um, in this one it looks like we do not have the right work order so I'm going to create a new work order and we're going to name this one Stockpile. finish and for this one we don't need a design so I'm just going to accept it with no design needed all right so now I can still see my control points but I don't see the design in my way and so now what we're going to do is we're going to hit that top left three line menu drops down to show measure control point measure type or easy level and we're going to hit measure type okay so now it's going to give us three options it's going to show us a point it's going to show us an existing line or a brand new line for this example, we're going to first create a new line. And then for the line type, it's going to be volume boundary. And then for the name, I'm just going to name it boundary. And we're going to hit accept. All right, so now in real time, I'm going to have to walk around the toe of the slope and shoot it. So as you can see in the pictures, that is the toe of the slope on the outside. And I'm going to be shooting the very bottom, right where it meets existing ground. And I'm going to go all the way around that sucker and record the volume boundary. So again, the volume boundary is also acting as toe of slope in this case. Um, it is both going to be, it's going to have a dual effect, I guess, in regards to this work order. You always have to have a volume boundary just to get quantities, but your volume boundary is going to be accurate measurements. So you can't just freely walk around and shoot ridiculous points. It, it needs to actually be based on some factual ground so I've recorded the entire line and I'm going to go just short of where I began the line. What it'll do is it'll actually close that line for us automatically. Um, and now one thing you might be interested in is if I zoom up here, all of a sudden I have all these line points that's just kind of chaotic. There's a way to turn that off. You're going to hit that gearbox settings on the right and you're going to deselect point names and we'll hit accept on that. And now, as you can see, the point names are gone, but now the elevations are still there. So now I can go back to the gearbox and deselect point elevations. <clears throat> and now when I go back, you can see that all the points are gone, and it's a nice clean red line showing our volume boundary. I'm going to make sure it's a little closer to my where I started my line. So now I'm going to hit those three lines on the top for my menu and bring that down, and then I'm going to hit measure type. And that's going to bring me back to these options for what type of measurement I'm going to create. Um, now I'm going to go back to new line, and in this case, the line type, I'm going to make it be called a break line. So a break line is essentially wherever we have a hard angle on our 3D surface or our 3D model. Because pretty much we're creating the 3D model, right? And that's how we're creating this, this 3D model representation of the stockpile. Um, now there, if I just took shots all over this pile, it'd be somewhat accurate, but all those dots are going to connect with each other in whichever fashion they want. There's really no order. The closest point will connect to the closest point. But in some cases, that can really screw up how the shape should be formed of what's actually happening. So a break line lets them know where the bottom of the slope is, where the top of the slope is, where angle points are, which can be very, very important. So. For the bare minimum, we're going to want to at least have the top of the slope and the bottom of the slope. And sometimes if your pile is just very, very irregular, it, it helps to maybe flatten off the pile if you can, um, depending on how big of a pile. But in this case, it's defined enough. I'm going to just make it work. Um, so we're going to go, we shot the very bottom of the slope and we call that our volume boundary. Um, it's acting as our volume boundary and as our tail of slope. And now we're going to go on top of the pile and we're going to create a going to create a new break line and we're going to name it top of pile. All right, so I'm going to get myself up on the pile here and start recording the shots. And here you can see I'm going all the way in a circle. Same idea. It's going to close itself off. I'll come up as very close to where I began and then I'm going to hit the top left menu and switch to measure type. Okay, so now we're going to go to point. Now we're going to create a lot of surface points. Um, we're going to do on the center of the top, maybe a little bit on the slope, just to catch any weird irregularities or how steep the slope is. 
All the point is, is it's its own information for that area on a contour. So if you see any specific irregularities on the gray change, you may want to make some more tight points. But in general, we'll do like a 10 by 10 grid. Um, it, it can differ. It's definitely, if it's a very flat surface, you can definitely spread that out further. If you have a lot of irregularities on your grade, um, the tighter you make your grid lines, uh, the better. So let's go ahead and we're going to say, call this point topo one. At this point, the, it doesn't matter what the name is. Um, it is a surface, so the point type is a surface. Now it says, do you want to show every time? So what that means is every time we hit accept or we record a point, it's going to bring up this menu to give us the ability to rename it. I'm going to say, no, don't show me this every time. I just want to keep going. I want to keep moving along and I don't want this menu to pop up. What that means though is I'm not going to have the option to name it, but it will just go consecutively topo 1, topo 2, topo 3 on its own. Okay, so it did pop up and it had a question for me after I tried to take a point and it says, GNS precision is not meeting the criteria set in the settings, precision of the current measurement, and then it gives me a horizontal and my vertical errors. Um, you can see my horizontal is actually fairly tight at 300s, but my vertical is right above the tolerance I set, which was 0 0.083, I believe. <clears throat> All that means is inside your rover, you can have settings that says, hey, if my errors ever get above this, these numbers, do not let me take the shot, or at least give me the option to consider taking the shot. <clears throat> so what you can do is you can just hit no, and then you can sit on the point a little bit longer, and you can see on the very top right, you see your horizontal errors where your satellites, you see how many satellites you have, and you see your um, error residuals. Now that I'm under, I'm on, I can take the shot. So that's just a quick little uh, good note. All right, I took all my shots on the top of the pile. Now I'm gonna come down, I'm going to do a new break line. So I'm gonna hit the top left menu, bring it down to measure type. I'm gonna go to a new line and I'm gonna make sure the line type is break line. And I'm gonna say the line name is top of pile one. So I could just name it top of pile, hit accept. It'll immediately name it top of pile one. Like I said, it just goes consecutively with numbers if you don't give it a custom name. So I'm gonna shoot this irregular part of the pile and call it top of pile. And now I'm gonna take some more topo points. Now real quick, as I'm beginning to shoot some topo points, I notice that my line is a little bit um, goofy. Do you see that top of, the top of a uh, pile line is just that doesn't quite work for me. I've screwed up on my alignment. So we can correct that. If we highlight one of the points that we believe are bad, we can go to, which would be line point 41, I believe. We would um, hit delete point. And then it's gonna say, are you sure you wish to delete point line point 41? We'll say yes. And then it will delete that screwed up point. And there you go, that point is deleted and we don't no longer have that goofy point. Okay, I'm going to take a few more shots here, and I'm going to take some on around this little ditch, if you will, um, just because there's some weird elevations going on in there, and I want to make sure that it's captured. So, so now that we've taken enough shots of our stockpile, we feel good about the uh, measurements we've taken. Now we want to get some numbers. So what you can do is you hit the top left menu, and you're going to go down to Kogo, and then we're going to go Review and Edit Data. It's going to pop up this menu for reviewing and edit data. And the first button there is called Compute Volume, and that's the one we want. Now, when you hit it, you're going to see it says Select Your Boundary. And if you remember at the very beginning, we created a volume boundary around the toe of the slope. It acted as our toe slope and our volume boundary at the same time. That's perfect. So what we're going to do is we are going to select that, that gray line, and it's going to highlight itself as blue. And now it's going to give us some options at the top. Um, Immediately, you're going to see the one that says expansion at 0%. That's going to be your expansion for like fluff of your dirt. Um, we are just going to leave that at zero. This is rock, so we don't have any expansion. Um, you may consider that if you're going to dig out a native ground and you want to consider expansion for going from native ground to um, disturbed ground, there will be a little bit of expansion there. But in this case, we're just going to call it zero expansion. And as you can see, we have the option for stockpile. In this case, that's actually perfect. We want it to be stockpile. Um, the difference between these two is you can see it says stockpile or measure to an entry elevation. Now, there's actually going to be three if we added a design to this. If you added a design, you could compare this whole stockpile to where a finished grade would be. 
um, but or whatever model you drop into your software. But in this case, we're just going to use stockpile. What stockpile does is at the toe of slope or at your volume boundary, it will just make a flat plane. It's just straight across. It'll connect all those dots and make it flat. And then anything above that flat plane, it'll consider those quantities. So from our volume boundary, the, all that blue, all those blue lines will connect to each other and make a flat plane. And then everything above that will be considered for our volume. And that's perfect. That's exactly what we want for a stockpile. So we're going to say, yep, and we're going to accept that. And it's going to start computing the volume. And then there you go. It's going to give you a report on your volume. It's going to give you expansion factor of 0%, total cut volume, total fill volume. We didn't have any because we went straight from the plane up. So it's saying, what this is basically saying is if you wanted to remove that pile, you'd have 83 or 84 cubic yards. Um, as you can see, the net cut balance is exactly the same because there is no fill to balance out. It gives you your base area, base perimeter, um, your measured surface area, and your boundary. It's letting you know which boundary you selected in case you have multiple ones or a few different stockpiles that you want to measure. Okay, so let's say though we did want to compare it to a design. Well, we don't have a design in here, so we got to go back out. And we're going to hit that top left menu button, those three lines. We're going to go to Project Setup. And we're going to change Project. And then we're going to add a design. Before I said no design needed, we're going to say we want Chick-fil-A finish grade. Hit Accept. OK, and we'll zoom up. And there we are. There's our stockpile as it sits on the model. OK, so there's a lot going on here, as you can see. We're sitting over essentially a parking lot. And there's an island that we're actually kind of sitting on top as well. Well, let's just say for the fun of it, we wanted to know what it would take from to compare this stockpile to finished grade. How much material does actually have to come out of this area of this parking lot, or how much rock can we leave there? Um, it's kind of a goofy scenario. You probably wouldn't do this, but this is just for an example. So if we did want to compare this stockpile to finished grade, or to any model we throw in here, we're going to go to that menu. We're going to go to Kogo, Review and Edit Data. Now immediately it's going to give you those all those options. We're going to hit that volume button right off the bat, that little box. And it's going to say, hey, select your boundary. So we're going to select our gray boundary. And then we're going to hit that stockpile option. And now we have three options. We have stockpile, measure to enter to elevation, or measure to design. Let's, we're going to hit the measure to design. And now it's going to also give you a new option where you can do a vertical design offset. Say that you know your parking lot, is, this model goes to finished grade, and you know your subgrade section. Say it's you know four inches of AC and eight inches of rock. Um, you could add a foot offset here and get yourself to subgrade. And then you could really see, what is this stockpile? How does this compare to me getting to subgrade? How much does it have to come down? Can I leave this rock? What have you. So you could add that here, um, and it would drop everything of that model down a foot and still compare it to your stockpile. We're going to hit accept on that. And there you go. You get your uh, report. And as you can see here, now we do have a total fill volume. Um, it's going to actually balance that out for you in the areas that it has to cut and fill. And that will be how you get measurements and the quantities on stockpile.